convincing you about what I believe in my main concern is to find people with the like-minded minds like minister the realist temple the reality is temple on earth I can relate with that guy I can say he's talking sense because he has intelligence and he doesn't come up with rubbish he comes up with well thought conversations he's thought about this he's still thinking about it as right now as we speak about it and after that he'll be thinking about it because he's a thinker he's not just a doer taking information and repeating it he's a thinker he's been intrigued his mind's been intrigued by reality by things on earth that have woken him up I do want to say something right now. Um, there is a YouTuber who has really got in my heart, and that is Angel Snub Nub Seven. He reminds me a lot of my father. My father died last year of a heart attack, and me out. Uh, there have been times it was a. I had made a couple of videos really attacking Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton because I didn't like that we only seem to see them when a, uh, a a nationwide case occurs or when celebrities need are in trouble. And I didn't like that. But Angel Snuff Nuff 7 made a video recently speaking about how we need to band with black leaders. I don't care if they're not doing everything perfect. I don't care that we don't like certain things they do. They're the only support we have. Nobody else is stepping up and willing to be on the front lines like they are. And Angel Snuff Nuff 7 was correct. And I want to thank him for that because he may not have been directed towards me, but he may have been. But I heard what he said, and I want to thank you for that, teacher. I appreciate that. Welcome to the Realities Temple on Earth. My name is Jeroen, and uh, I would like to say that Angel Snub Snub 7 isn't a racist at all. He's a good friend, and uh, I owe him a lot of uh, support. And uh, I would like to say that uh, we have one common goal, and that is psychiatry is the uh, worst scam on Earth, okay? Uh, because uh, they drug people, they drug children, they uh, they give people more problems than than they uh, already have, and yeah, that's about it for the first video. Himself, and you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been in prison. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why, you understand what I'm saying? You, yes, sir. We have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Because yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple, and we have to recover. Yes, sir. Because what is supremacy is a clinical dis-ease. It is a dis-ease, and the dis-ease has been running for so long that they don't need, the, 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 the white man don't have to continue to kick your ass mm -hmm. on uh, uh, up front. He has made it so that he has gotten into you like a virus and you kick your own ass. Yes, sir. And it even has trickled down to some of us right here in the so-called conscious community. Right. Watch as we pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, Ashe. Ashe. In fact, I tend to the garden of the mind and the pool of the soul daily, praying ceaselessly with boldness, casting my cares on the provider of all things. The protection I have is truth based in wisdom, mission being to eradicate ignorance, 
With persistent due diligence, I step on devils. As holy breath speaks the straight path to eternal life, whom shall I fear? This is much more than rhetorical acrobatics set to rhythm. Our work is an in-depth analysis into the houses built where the soul resides with precision. As J. Dave says, balance is... But you, um, a lot of your video content to me was very informative. You know, the things you talked about had substance, man. And um, you, and I first really knew about you because of JT Rally 1. Real nigga news, you know, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you and him got into a conflict with each other. And um, when I did my website, you were the only brother. And let me stress that, because when I did that website, blackcommune.net, and I did the video and I asked the black YouTube community, the so-called black YouTube community. To give me your videos because at the time a lot of brothers were getting flagged and videos taken down so I said you know what you can put your videos on my website so that the message can still be heard for all to hear you know something like you know a little web I, I, I made that website for everyone but you were the only one that gave me permission to use your videos and I thought that was very honorable of you and really a testament to how much you cared about the black community because all these other brothers that talk about it you know and and say they love the black community and all this other shit when it came down to supporting me or helping me out they were nowhere to be found and that's that's really a big sign. If if somebody really care about black people, then they would want to help black people. But you were the only one. Angels Nup Nup Seven, you know I've you've, I've been supporting your videos um for a while now, um way before any of this craziness ever happened. Um, you know I've been commenting commenting to you and. We've been exchanged uh, messages back and forth in the past. So all this people trying to make it seem like, you know, you just thought, found me out and came to me and wanted to jump in the middle, whatever the case may be. I guess they can think what they want to think. But I just want to quickly say I appreciate your support as well and your understanding of the situation and I am not happy about what happened as far as the um, the situation getting kind of um, hostile. However, in the, you know the defamation of your character and things like that, but I am glad and I am appreciative of the support that you um, offered me at that time. And um, again. I enjoy your videos, and of course, I'll, I'm definitely always tuned in and always trying to keep up and watch all of them, actually. So, um, yeah, and a lot of other people should do the same because it's a lot of knowledge in those videos, and uh, it, it, it definitely, they definitely are thought-provoking. The um, I love, I love the amount of thinking the the videos and the words and things like that when i leave i'm always like you know thinking about new ideas and new things and that's just me i want to know everything about everything about everything so those videos definitely um are for a person like me i'm talking about not falling into the teacher trap not falling into the website trap so today what teachers can you learn from? We just told you that the Aka Wu tells you that we're all a great teacher at the same time. So who are you going to learn from? You're going to learn from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives of people like Brother Polite. The positives and negatives of people like Sara and Seti. You're going to learn from Maurice Muhammad, Talik Ibn Rod. You're going to learn from Netherkat. You're going to learn. You're definitely going to learn from King Noble. You're definitely going to learn a little something something from Brother Daku. 
but we ain't the only teachers in the world. There are other people in your lives right now that are teaching you things that you need to know. Now, do you follow your teacher every single place and everywhere? Not necessarily. But if you got a good teacher, your teacher is going to teach you how to think, not what to think. And if you learn how to think, then you can be critical of all information. You can question anything. Your teachers ain't going to get mad. Huh? Your teacher, if he's your, truly your teacher, give me the question. Bring them on. If I can't answer the question, then I'm going to meditate on it, reflect on it, and try to get back with you with the answer, get back to you with the answer. But I'm also going to encourage you to think. It's important for you to think. You're not just my student, you're also my teacher. I'm not your teacher, I'm also your student. Don't fall into the teacher trap. This has been Daku Akabo Wakatu. I'm Andre Devon, 69, student minister of action for the Reality Temple on Earth. And I'm making this particular video about the Reality Temple and how it changed my views and um, some of my um, concepts about life. But first, I want to say that I want to thank uh, Angel Snub Love 7 for uh, being there for me, administering to me over YouTube and in person, over the phone. Um, the brother believed in me to make these videos. He, uh, he gave me the opportunity. He gave me the free will to make these videos that I make in association with the Reality Temple on Earth. Uh, I want to say that if I would have had a brother like this in my life 10, 15 years ago, I probably wouldn't have took the path that I took. But that was my experience. This brother's a good role model for us. You know, he, he don't drink. He never smoked. He never used drugs. He's not a habitual criminal or any form of criminal. He know what it's like to be um, locked down in a prison for something he didn't do. Um, he know what suffering is all about. And that's what uh, drew my attention to him in his videos. My brother Angel Snubnob 7 at the Reality Temple. And to give props to him, because I listen to all of Angel Snubnub 7's videos, I think that um, he comes from a different angle. And there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out, and I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from, and I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the black supremacy movement as well. And I have nothing against that because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. In the name of my ancestors, peace, forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the World Wide Web, <laughs> or the Internet. I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to just take a few moments, and I always appreciate your time. It is an honor that you would find me worthy of being listened to. It is always an honor 
for me to come before these of whom I call my people and you allow me to speak with you because I know you're busy I know that surely I'm I am not worthy of your time but for you to give me just a few seconds a, a minute of your most precious valuable time that you could be doing something else I really really appreciate it I would like to bring in defense upon this video I would like to defend my brother the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan the Honorable Jesse Jackson the Honorable Al Sharpton the Honorable Bobby Seale there are so many of our freedom fighters who are still living today that y'all greatly disrespect it makes no difference whether I agree with what Louis Farrakhan has to say or what he does or what he did the same for Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson Bobby Seale or any of our brothers and sisters who we still have the honor of being uh, among in life with those who fought for us so many years ago it makes no difference whether you agree or disagree these men you should respect and honor regardless to what they are or have become today because many of us would not even exist and I know I would not exist without the influence without the activity of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and our brothers and sisters who was fighting when I was in diapers these men were fighting for our freedom fighting for our rights in this nation when many of you were not even born some of y'all was in diapers you have the nerve to sit around and say that these men are attention hounds such a thing could be true at the same time let us use common sense there are from 40 to 70 million black people in this nation and within that 40 to 70 million black people in this nation something is always happening you cannot expect Louis Farrakhan you cannot expect Al Sharpton or Bobby Seale or Jesse Jackson or any of our people who still live today you cannot expect them to get involved with everything that happens to the to the 40 to 70 million black people in this nation that don't make any sense we should be happy that they respond be older men now doing what they do because the ma the majority of you who said these things have done nothing for nobody except run your silly mouth you have not created a civil rights bill you have changed no law the only thing you did was take a bag of potato chips, sit your lazy self down on a couch, and critique somebody. Well, now I'm going to critique you. Lazy, incompetent, silly Negro. When Louis Farrakhan and Al Sharpton, Louis Farrakhan, who stuck with Elijah Muhammad, Jesse Jackson, who stuck with the Honorable Martin Luther King Jr., when these men were in the streets facing the oppressor where were you at what was you doing in 1950 what was you doing in 1960 70 80 90 even 2000 what have you done or doing these are older men now anyway what do you expect from a handful of men what's wrong with you Farrakhan 
is an attention hound. Shelton is a race bait attention hound. Jesse Jackson. If you can de do better, step your butt up. But you can't step up because you ain't about nothing. You won't even step to me because I'm going to check you and put you in your place. You have no works. You have nothing. But you benefit from the sacrifice of Louis Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and many others, known and unknown. There are many brothers and sisters who we don't know that help Farrakhan, that help Sharpton, that help Jesse, Martin Luther King, that help Marcus Garvey. While you sit back and you've done nothing. These great men, they sacrifice something you don't know nothing about. Many of them had children, wives and children. They stayed away from their family weeks upon weeks, months upon months, risking their lives, facing a vicious enemy that still exists today because lazy bum like you won't get up and help us get this beast off our back once and for all, y'all cowards. You're not willing to sacrifice and suffer, you butt lickers, bunch of coons. If you can do better, then show us the way. Instead of talking your bull crap. I might not agree with Louis Farrakhan. I might not agree with Jesse. I might not agree with nobody. But anybody trying to do something, Richard Pryor said in one of his comedy routines, don't get angry and jealous about any brother trying to do something. Y'all a bunch of weak nerds. You won't. You hide behind a computer. In my day, during Jesse Day, during Firecon Day, Bobby Seal Day, there was no computer for your cowardly, sissified self to hide behind. Most of y'all won't say nothing unless you can hide. Jesse Jackson don't hide behind no computer screen. Farrakhan don't hide behind no computer screen. Most of the majority of y'all bums hide behind your computer. You don't impress me. And Jesse and Farrakhan and all these men should seek attention. Because the attention they seek is to the suffering, the injustice of a people. So they can tell the world about the oppression, the continued racism that black people in America face. What are you bringing attention to? Nothing and nobody. Even the little YouTube video, you get upon it to try to spread your poison. Well, when you're dealing with a snake, it is always best to understand that snake. Capture that snake and make anti-venom. So you bring your poison here. You bring your venom here. Because as long as I exist, I will speak. And I don't have to like nobody, but I will speak and defend any black man or woman trying to do something. I don't have to like your method. But I will give you your props and your credit and respect you for trying because the majority of these, whoo, I told somebody I wouldn't use profanity. But y'all some profane things and, you, and that seems like the only type of language that you can understand because you're so silly. I stand with any brother or sister trying to do something for us. These men. Minister Farrakhan is 80 years old, still moving on, still trying to do something. Regardless to what you might think his intent is. We don't really know and you really can't prove. Nor Al Sharpton, nor Jesse Jackson, you really don't know. But that time should have been over a long time ago. They should be allowed to retire. Since you know so much, then step up. But you can't step up because you ain't got nothing to, 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 to show. 
Nothing to present. Except critique of old people. Where is your works? Where is your actions? What are you doing? Nothing, absolutely nothing. That's why you hide your face behind a computer screen. And you're not going to ever do nothing. Because you don't know nothing. You are comfortable living in the house of racists. Most of y'all are direct or indirect Uncle Tar Ray, Uncle Ruckus Coons. Some of y'all are coons and y'all talk about black power. I'm black conscious and you still a, a coon. You a sambo. You a dark European. You don't fool me. And many of y'all don't mess with me because you know you don't fool me. I see right through your facade. I know exactly what you are. A bunch of sexual perverts. You put pornography over black liberation. You put Disneyland over black liberation. Your heart is not in the freedom of a people. How many years has it been since Marcus Garvey? And we're still talking about black power. We need to be free. Should have been free a long time ago. Because you ain't got serious. So if the men can't step up, then maybe it's time for the women to do so. I'll talk about that later on. But you really need to leave Jesse, Farrakhan, and Shopton alone. Because you ain't earned the privilege. You ain't nowhere near deserve to talk about these men after what they have done, regardless to what they're doing now. You can do better. Step up to the plate and sh let show them and us how it should have been done a long time ago. Otherwise, why don't you sit your silly, nasty, disgusting self down? <laughs> that doesn't come. Let's talk about it. This was and is the Rallys Temple on Earth. You just go your way, I go my way. Louis Farrakhan has never done nothing to me. And I have seen him do nothing that I can say that he brought harm to the black community. If he has, prove it. If you don't like Scientology, if you don't like bean pies or whatever, just leave the Muslims alone. All this hate. And you think that you're not sick, niggas. That's why. I always. I don't believe in God. But if God gave me the opportunity. That's why I say. And I would tell and, and suggest to God. Destroy all of you. You don't have the right to live. Since you are no good on top of the ground. Maybe you do better under the ground. All of you, blacks, racist pinks, browns, all humanity should be destroyed as far as I'm concerned. Because y'all too silly. Now, let me say this. <clears throat> because of your hate. Because of your dislike for a person. Because you don't like the vessel truth comes in. Because Farrakhan tells the truth. Or I might tell the truth. Because you don't like me. Because you don't like Farrakhan. Or you don't like somebody. You will reject it. And that truth is your best available option. But because of hate. You, you will reject your own salvation. Your own, the only real solution. Because the bottom line is none of y'all ain't got nothing going on more than the nation of Islam. Show me. Anybody. You just starting off. You can't even compare yourself. 
So a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all talk about Minister Farrakhan so that hopefully maybe you can get some attention because you need to try to bring down a big boy to bring some attention to you. I don't do that. I express my open and honest opinion and disagreement. I'm hoping to help, not to hurt. And the person who is the big boy, they have a problem if they're so high and mighty, if they're so arrogant, they can't listen to a little guy. Because some of your best advice might come from your little children. We, when I was little, as little children, we told our mother, don't do this, don't do that. And our parents would not listen to their little children. And guess where mama and daddy ended up? They ended up in jail and we was at, at the house by ourselves. Are you listening to me? Are you thinking? No applause. No emotion. Really sit back and and just be just get in a quiet room and just think about our situation. Really look at it. Some of us are not looking at the whole picture. We only looking up looking at what we want. It's not about what I want. It's not even about what Farrakhan wants. It's not about what the Black Power Cartel or the House of Consciousness or King Dover. It's not about what we want. It's about what you should want for a people. What's in the best interest of an entire people. And the people consists of many different ideas and ways of doing things and thoughts. But there has to be a common goal. Something Something, a common glue. Are you with me, y'all? I'm, I'm almost done. I didn't really want to talk this long. I thought I, I, I thought I could do it in an hour. But y'all hang with me, okay? And give me some feedback. I know that I am a very intimidating force. <laughs> I know that. I know. But you can talk to me. I'm not going to bite you. I'm not going to cuss you out like you go to many of these uh, channels and when you bring up a question or say something, these people want to cuss you out and all like that. You will never be treated that way here. I will try to treat you uh, with honor and respect just like I want to be treated. But you have these people, they can't be civil and corner to save their lives. They want to force their idea on you. You ain't going to force nothing here. Take your non-educational, non-intelligent, backwards, profane, vile, nasty self somewhere else. We don't have time for you. Master Farad Muhammad came to bring civilization to the uncivilized. So I understand about you, savages. Now this is the reality, brothers and sisters. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and try to wrap this up. Don't you know, really, the reality now, you are in and we are in a life and death situation. And really, our time has run out, really. To be truthful, your time has run out. But in religious teachings, it says that the God gives you mercy. So you're living in the day and the time of mercy. This is a life and death situation. You don't have time to be screwing around no more. And it is too late in the game to create all these new organizations. Oh, so-and-so doing this and so-and-so doing that. It's nice that y'all got these new ideas. It's nice that we have the realities tip on earth and all this kind of good stuff. It's nice. But see, all things in due time, we don't need all these organizations. It's too many. Too many ideas, too many philosophies, it's too much of this bull crap. And I, I, I would even call the reality's temple a bunch of bull crap, it's too much. You're running out of time to save yourself. 
Can't you see you drowning? You waiting for a certain kind of rope. When a person is drowning, they don't care about the rope. Just throw it out here so I can snatch it and reel myself in. And you think that you're not a victim. You too stupid to grab the rope when somebody throw it out to you because you're looking for a particular color. You're looking for a particular size. Me, myself, I want to save my life. So throw me a rope, throw me a stick. Anything you throw me, I don't want to drown. Reel me in to safety. Nobody have an economic program they can show work. It's all brand new. We don't have time to run around here. Experimentation. We're not scientists. We're trying to get free. Minister Farrakhan shown a letter that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote to Dr. King and many other civil rights leaders talking about the economic program, the three-year, five-year economic program of the Nation of Islam. They were probably too dumb to embrace that because that's them Muslims. I don't want nothing to do with the Muslims. We so stupid. You don't have enough sense to understand and see when things make sense because you don't think we emotional. We want what we want when we want it. In other words, you, you crazy and insane. You'd rather drown than grab over the rope. So, if you hate Minister Farrakhan, if you don't like the nation of Islam, and you reject these, this economic program that Louis Farrakhan is presenting to us, then what are we going to do? What else do you have to offer the people? The nation of Islam, whether you like it or not, and some of y'all are jealous and and whatever. Cause, oh yeah, you're jealous. I, I know you're jealous. The nation of Islam reaches thousands of our people. How many do y'all reach? A few hundred? And those few hundred ain't gonna do nothing. The only thing they're gonna do is write on your video, uh, great video. Preach. Teach. That's the only thing they're gonna do. They're not gonna participate in doing anything. The nation of Islam have thousands of people ready to do the work. Ready to do the work. Most of y'all people ain't going to do nothing. They don't want to do no work. Minister Louis Farrakhan reaches people in America and around the planet. There's a benefit to working with somebody like that. But you're so egotistical. You're so arrogant. You only think about yourself. The Nation of Islam already have the organizational structure that you need and the talent. How many scientists do you have? What type of educated people do you have? What do you have to offer as an individual in your little group? Time is running out. Look how they dying in Chicago. Look how they dying in New York and Philadelphia and St. Louis. All of our people are suffering. And you waiting on a special, something special to come down the, the, the pike that you can agree with. If you are in a fire, you don't ask the fireman, oh, are you a Muslim? Are you Christian? Are you an atheist? Because if you, I don't like Christians. I don't like atheists. I only want a Muslim to, to save me. Stupid stuff. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to conclusion. And I want to talk to the, to the nation of Islam. I, want, I hope that Brother Farrakhan could listen to what I have to say. But I'm a, I'm a little nobody guy. See, our people 
And I want to say this to, to the nation of Islam. See, our people, a lot of us, including myself, see, I don't want nothing to do with Scientology. That's your thing. I love your presentation of Elijah Muhammad's economic program. I love it because we know, we know it works. You don't have to guess. You don't have to believe in it. If you do it the way that it was done, the economic program of Elijah Muhammad, it worked. We know that. But I have nothing to do with Scientology. That's your thing. And I don't want this work of supporting the economic program to somehow support Scientology. See, that's a valid, that's, that's something valid. What's that word I'm looking for? That's a valid concern. Okay? I don't want nothing to do with the promotion of Islam or any religion. I have a problem with that. I don't want my participation in an economic program to support some nation based on religion. See, that's a that's a that's a concern. See, so if I mean, be truthful with me. If you really are about, if you just want to build your economics, not 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 to help black people, but you want to support Scientology and you want to create some kind of nation, country, under Islamic rule, then I, I have no choice. I can't participate in that. Has nothing to do with I dislike you or hate you. But see, you said that this economic program is for black people. And all of us do not support Islam and we don't support Scientology or none. That's your own personal thing. And I will tell you this, see, we are living under mercy. This is the reason why. See, all these bumps in the road, we got to iron all this stuff out in order for us to move on. Let us, let us sit back and iron these questions and concerns. Let us iron these out. Because, see, Mr. Louis Farrakhan had the voice, the ears of black men and this country in 1995. We had the Million Man March. But instead of presenting to black people the economic program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan decided to talk to us about a dollar bill, George Washington and the Illuminati or whatever it was, I can't even remember what the speech was really about, and tell us, tell black men to atone. Now see, why should black men atone when we were not and have not been in our state of mind. You tell somebody to atone who knows better. If I don't know any better, if I was trained, it's just like taking your dog. If you train your dog to do something and that dog does it and you get in trouble, is it the fault of the dog or is it the fault of the trainer? We were brought up in and have been in a in a in a unrighteous, filthy, violent, profile, profane society for four hundred years. We are not in our right state of mind. Now, once you come into your right state of mind, once you know right from wrong, once you know right from wrong, and you decide to do wrong then you should atone for your evils and try to be right. But we don't know and have never known right from wrong. Not really. So why should we atone when the society itself accepts this type of behavior? Whether it is black men or, or Caucasian men or whatever. We know that in this society... It is acceptable and it's all right and it is justified that males demean, exploit women. But see, that's a separate issue and 
is not really up for debate, and that's not the issue. The issue is our economic strength. So since we live under the time and what must be done because you have been given mercy, you've been given a second opportunity, then instead of being so arrogant, you don't want to listen to little guys, but these are valid concerns that you need to deal with because if, if the people have concerns and you don't really address these concerns, then you cannot, the program that you want to implement, it will, it will, it can't, it will never work the way it needs to work. Because you claim this is for all the people. I am all the people. I don't want you to, now look, let's, let's be real. We are not here to kiss people's backside. That's not what it's about. But it is about addressing valid concern. Now, if we, are, if we reject this opportunity, this economic program, what y'all going to do? The program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it works. I'm shocked. You don't have to be you don't have to be a Muslim in order to implement this program. It's been around for a long, long time. Nobody, none of y'all. Well, I also know that we know that it works. But many of you would not implement the program because that's, the, that's that Muslim stuff. You don't want to give Elijah Muhammad no credit. You don't want to give Malcolm no credit. You don't want to give Farrakhan no credit. You want it all yourself. That's tacky. Let me tell y'all something. See, a lot of y'all have never been incarcerated. So those of you who have been in prison, now some of y'all have been in prison, but you just decided to do your time. So you just sit around and the judge tell you you're going to be in prison for 15 years or 20, 20 years or you there for life. You just sit around and don't do nothing. Act silly, uh, shite people, and steal, and act stupid. Don't learn nothing while you're locked up. See, you have those type of people who are incarcerated. But see, I was incarcerated. And I was ignorant. But I began to seek out knowledge. And when I began to learn the law, when I began to understand, look, I began to understand my situation. When you locked up, you willing to try anything. Now, I didn't want to jump the fence. I could have jumped the fence and been on the run, a fugitive. I didn't want that way because I didn't want I don't want to live looking over my shoulder. So I wanted to do it the right way. There is no right way when you have been incarcerated unjustly, but that's, that's the only way I can describe it. So I learned the law. I learned my situation. See, y'all really, y'all talk all this black power stuff, but you don't really understand your situation. You running out of time. You think you have all the time in the world to screw around and do whatever you want to. No, you don't. And perhaps this year, you're going to find out that you run it out of time. Hmm. You don't know. When you are incarcerated, you do you are willing to try anything to get out of your out of jail. So I would try this motion. I try that motion. I make allies with people I don't like. I said it again. I make friends. I make allies with people I don't like. I make friends with, 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 the, with, with the enemy. I smile and skin and grin in their, in their face. They put their guard down and they give me information. They give me access to things they normally would not give me because I was hostile. Because they, they view me as a threat, filled with hate and all that other bull crap. Oh no, police officer, I like you. You all right. 
I like you, dude. Don't like nobody. I'm trying to get out of jail. We have to learn how to look at things, take what is good, and take, take the rest of it and push it out the way. And just concentrate on what is good for us. Now, again, you, you reject this national, national um, and what's the word I'm looking for? We're looking at this as a national program. It's not just in St. Louis. It's not just in New York. You're looking at, you're looking at something that can immediately go nationwide. None of y'all can be, none of you are on that level. Our people are national. Our people are in California, New York, Michigan, Texas, all over this country. Some of y'all, you can't, you only have, you, you're not on that level. Our time is running out. And within this economic program that Minister Louis Farrakhan is presenting to us, we can also bring back what the Black Panthers used to do. All kinds of things can come, all kinds of good things can come out of this effort if we do it right. I'll tell you this, see, there must be checks and balances. Because black folks, we are scared of being cheated out of. So, not only is the nation of Islam involved, but we have to have a system of checks and balances. So, maybe the new Black Panther Party, watch the brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam, and then the nation of Islam... Watch the, the brothers and sisters who are in the NAACP, whoever is involved in, in this program trying to get it together. And anybody, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close my talk with this. And anybody, if we can come together and get this to rolling, anybody found cheating, our people, whether the Caucasian people like it or not, we find out what they're doing, and you find them in the river, on the bridge, feed them to the pigs. You don't cheat and rob and steal from our people. System of checks and balances. We punish, not their, not their courts. We, just, we find who these traitors are, these thieves are, these liars are, and we will deal with them. The hell with what Caucasian people in their justice system. You don't rob and steal from black folks. That's death sentence. And we carry it out. They don't have nothing to do with this. Brothers and sisters, we are in a life and death situation. Just like Minister Farrakhan said, you can take it or let it alone. It's not, it's not about liking somebody, disliking somebody. It's about, I want to live. Not just for me. What is in the best interest of the future of our people? They need economic program now. Y'all too little, all these little funky little organizations and cliques. Y'all too little to, 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 to do anything. But see, you're so stupid. You can align yourself with somebody big and strong and suck off their breath. And you can get big. But be careful. Be careful. Because you don't want to be seen as a traitor. Because we'll find your body in the river. We'll find your body in the, in the river. This is serious business. And if you're not serious, the best thing that you can do is stay the hell out the way. I want to be free. I want to be economically free. I want jobs for our people. I want to grow our own food, our own cows, chickens. I want international trade. I want what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad promised. He said, I give you not only freedom, but friends in all walks of life, regardless to your religious beliefs. 
Because free people got it like that. So I'm not an enemy to the nation of Islam. I'm not an enemy to Louis Farrakhan. But I'm, a, I'm an enemy to lies. I'm, a, I'm an enemy to deceit. I'm an enemy to falsehood. Just because I disagree with you don't mean I hate you. If you really want what I want, then we need to try to find a way to do this together. What's in the best interest of our people? Our people! Not your funky little organization. It's about our people who are different. They will never become, all of them will never become Muslims. They will never become so-called atheists. They will never become whatever y'all think they should be. Because this is still a learning process. We have not stopped our evolution. It don't stop with the Nation of Islam. It don't stop with the Black Panther Party. We are still, it's still a learning process. But we need to take care of ourselves. We need economics. We need to, we need to stop being, wasting our money the way we've been doing. And we need to show our children success instead of all this failure. Talking all this black power stuff and don't have a pot to piss in. Y'all should be embarrassed. I know I am. That's why you never hear me talk about black power don't have a pot to piss in. Let's get real. And, and in being real, that's my time. I'm done. And I, I hope that we can somehow get this, get ourselves together. And this is a wonderful program. We know it works. It did work. And we can do it again. And stop the bickering back and forth and all the hate and dislike. And try to work this together. And if a person is not right, let them prove it. If Minister Lewis Farrakhan, if anybody ain't right, let them Prove it. So we can see with, with, without a, a shadow of a doubt, that's what they are. But until then, let us, in our sincerity, do what is necessary for what is in the best interest of black people in America and really black people around the earth and really humanity itself. Because when we get ourselves together, you will be shocked how we, how we, not just one organization, how we change the world. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tariq Imara. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple.